following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the August 9th, fantastic Friday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I absolutely treasure your presence here today. My outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better money master and to provide you with tools that each of us need in order to lead an inspired life. Because leading an inspired life, folks, that is truly what it's all about. Let's make sure that we do that over the weekend. And let's start off by taking like, one of our tools. This is the tool I call reverse the word evil and you have the word live. The answer is yes. Bad things can happen to good people. Of course, it would only be fair that bad things only happen to bad people, but that's just simply not the way that life works. Instead, if something bad or evil happens to you, realize that perhaps a gift in that set of circumstances is that it will give you a new understanding, a new inner growth moment. Realize that the word evil is just the word live spelled backwards. I can tell you personally that this is absolutely true for me. I can remember the exact moment. I can picture so many moments, quite frankly. I can remember one moment when an attorney of mine said to me that bad things don't happen to good people. I can put myself right there in that spot, right in that chair. And I'm not going to go into the details of that event, but I'll, I'll summarize it for you. I had a contract with an individual, and I more than fulfilled my responsibilities of the agreement, more than paid for the services of of, of what I was supposed to do. And this individual on the other end was not living up to or intending to live up to their end of the agreement. An ironclad, solid contract, clear as bell. Now, at that time, it was worth a little, just a little under a half million dollars to me to go ahead and sue that person. But when my attorney and I, we looked at all the case law, we really studied everything, it looked like it was something that could easily drag on in the courts for years. Years and years and years. I mean, there was a case that we took a look at, I think it had gone on for like about 12 years, and it was possible that my case would run that same course out there. That's when I learned the uh, other phrase from another attorney who said a bad settlement is often better than a good lawsuit out there. So here's the story. If I had not gone through that bad experience, I likely would not have ended up here with you today. In fact, I'm certain that I would not have ended up with you here today. Now, maybe that's not important to you, but it's important to me because right now I'm doing the thing that I love doing the most, and I have always loved doing the things that I do in my life. It's why I absolutely do live with passion. Look, we can't control the circumstances in life, only how we react to them. And when it seems as if you've been dealt an evil card, just remember to reverse that thought and reverse the word evil and turn it into the word live because something that is evil, folks, it can, tr it can transcend a good person, and that's you, and it can propel you into an even better situation. That's right. Reverse the word evil, and you have the word live. Let's go check out these markets here. Let's go see what kind of evil or what kind of living we've got going on. Right now we've got the Dow futures off about 24 points, trading out at 15,428, S&P down a couple points at 1,691. NASDAQ futures totally flat out here. Russell 2000 off a couple of uh, points. King dollar on the move, that's up uh, 10 ticks right now, trading out at 8114. Relatively flat uh, market here, currency-wise, but we'll take a look at those. Gold, gold back a buck at 1308. Silver up six pennies at 2026. Light Swede crude, that's on its way. It's heading north. It's up a buck 15. We'll take a look at the stock chart, see what it's rejecting or where it's headed to. It's trading at 104.53 out there. Copper up a bit, platinum up a couple of bucks. Let's take a peek around the globe, see what we have going on out here. Over in Asia last night, nothing but green lights hanging from its trees. You had the Hang Seng, that was up 151 points, that was up 7 tenths of a percent. The Shanghai up 4 tenths of a percent, up about 8, closing out at 2147. The Nikkei, well, we call that flat to green, it was up 9 points out there, uh, stopping, the, uh, stopping the bloodbath that it's seen over the past couple of uh, trading sessions out there. 
In Europe right now, they're celebrating. I don't know what they're celebrating, but the FTSE's up seven-tenths of a percent. Maybe it's the new baby over there. It's up 44 points. The DAX over in Germany, up about three-tenths of a percent, up 22 bucks. Our call-in number, 877-927-6648. Give me a call, folks. We can take a look at your stock chart or anything that you would like. Let's begin our day by taking a number of uh, cards and letters. Well, basically, that means email in today's uh, uh, today's uh, world, and so uh, so I want to address a couple of things that were uh, sent off to me. And thank you for sending me emails. Love getting uh, love love hearing good, bad, or indifferent thoughts from uh, folks out there. Let's start off by taking a look at the uh, ES Mini. We're going to take a look here at the uh, thirty minute chart. Now, uh, you know, I have some other lines, squiggly lines drawn in on this chart that you normally don't see. In fact, let me get rid of a couple of them just to go ahead and clear it up. Now, if you're just listening on the radio or your mobile device, uh, tfnn.mobi. Thank you so much for doing that. Remember, you can always get the live stream of the show. That means you can see the chart that's on my uh, screen here right now by going to the homepage of tfnn.com. Over on the right-hand side, you'll see a button with three little smartphone devices. Click on that. The show streams live to you. And you can always catch the archive, replay this over and over again on Channel 9 at Tiger TV. Now, we're looking at the 30-minute chart out here. We're looking at a at a yellow highlighted box, basically a little consolidation zone that the ES Mini has been traveling in. We'll call the bottom of that right around 1680, and the top is 1704. So we're looking at about 23, 24-point uh, consolidation zone that the ES Mini has been traveling in ever since, uh, really come back here to July 30th. What are we at? August 9th right now? So about nine uh, trading sessions out there. Now, we've talked about that, so that's not really the question that was posed to me. You know I say fairly often that our favorite currency pair my favorite currency pair is the euro-yen. Why? Because when it comes to the stock market, the U.S. stock market, for whatever reason, I can't tell you what the reason is, that from a directional standpoint, it tracks better than any other currency pair that's out there. That's the red squiggly line. Somebody said, how do I know that? Well, I know that because I actually go back and, you know, I do all the work, all the detail, lay over different uh, currency pairs. Like, for example, if you were trading oil and you weren't paying attention to the Mexican peso and the U.S. dollar or the Canadian dollar and the U.S. dollar, in fact, both of those, while you were trading oil, you would be doing yourself a disservice because those currency pairs, more so than anything else, better track what's going on in the oil complex and the oil market, not the U.S. dollar index. And if you don't believe me and you trade, those, uh, and you trade oil, Go take a look at it, and especially because you want to understand divergence is going on. Why? Because of the fact that the currency market is so much larger in the currency markets. You'll see. You'll see when you see divergences, what you're looking for inside any marketplace is which way do they resolve themselves. Do they resolve themselves in the direction of the underlying index, or do they resolve themselves in the direction of the uh, currency pair? Well, in the case of the U.S. stock market, and if you take a look at the red line, this happens to be a 30-minute chart that's on the screen, but you can put any time frame on here. Again, remember, it's not going to tell you the value of the move. What you're looking for is from a directional standpoint. And if if we take a look at this, that red squiggly line, you can see on the 30-minute chart here, you can see how well it actually correlates to what's going on inside the market. And you can also see that when you see, uh, that for the most part, when you do see divergence, they resolve themselves in the direction of where the currency pair is traveling. Here's an example. I'll just go right and just kind of explode in on it. And this happened uh, between about 1 o'clock in the morning on August the 5th all the way up to a high that was put in at about 4.30 in the, morning. in the morning. And what we saw here was we saw the currency pair that was trading down at that time. Price was moving up. What eventually happened was that price got back on track. Price got back on track. It went ahead and moved down. And the question is, when things get back on track, where are they going to head to? Now, in this case here, how could that have helped you? Well, if you knew that this was a resistance zone out here at the 1704, I think that would have helped you in your trade. In fact, we know that this is a resistance zone. And if we were to receive a gift, a gift today, maybe a gift on Monday, and you got the ES Mini up to the 1704 area, that would be a gift most likely for going short. You'd have to take a look at what else is going on with the other indicators, what kind of bars are you coming in there with, and things of that sort. But here is an example, and I'm going to go ahead and take it off the uh, chart here because it just really clutters things up. But somebody had sent me an email and said, please help me understand how it is that it's the euro, Japanese yen that you say that correlates to the uh, U.S. stock markets. Uh, the question was why, and the answer is I don't know. I don't know why. I can't really tell you why. I don't spend a lot of time trying to figure out the why. I just like to know that something, it's kind of like electricity. I use it all the time. I'm a horrible electrician. 
I can fix things electrically, but boy, what I do is I turn off the electric power to the house or the building or what have you before I touch anything. And really what I do first is I call the electrician. I say, you come on over here and you fix this because I, I've been electrocuted. I don't want to be electrocuted again. I know what that uh, feels like. So, But I don't know really how electricity works. I just know that it does, and I use it all the time. That's what I do here with the Euro Japanese Yen. So that's on the 30-minute uh, chart. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. So now the question is, well, if, actually, if we take a look at it, what do we have going on here? You've got price moving up, and yet right now, and this is a 30-minute chart, we still have the Euro Japanese Yen moving down. That would kind of make you say, hmm, something to uh, think about. So now let's go take a look at the uh, markets as well, see what we've got going on out here. Let's go take a look at the, uh, let's take a look at Goldilocks here. Let's take a look at gold. This is a, uh, the chart that you're looking at on my screen here. Just, uh, you know, six of the uh, elements I like to just uh, be aware of what's going on inside the uh, market. Well, certainly Goldilocks is one of them. I gave you a number yesterday with regard to it's time to go long and strong, and that was a close above 13.0640 out there. Well, we got that. We most certainly got that. Yesterday's close was 13.12. That says that uh, gold has very likely put in the bottom. That doesn't mean that it can't backfill here and uh, there over the course of the next couple of days, but pretty decent support now at 12.7. That is most likely setting up the C point of an A to B equals C D up. Now, as we explode this, uh, as we explode the gold contract up here, what we're going to see from the low from June 28th to the high out here on July 24th, that all that gold has done is backed off to a .382 retracement. Look, there's three retracement numbers that you want to have on your Fibonacci ruler, in my opinion. 0 .382, 0 .618, 0 .786. A number of people use .50. I don't. Maybe you can. Maybe you should. Maybe you want to. But what I can tell you, what that .382 retracement is used for, is to identify a strong trend. Guess what we have in gold here? If that's the only retracement, we now have a strong trend. And it's not to the downside, folks. It's to the upside. What can you expect? 1441, 1486, 1545. 877-927-6648. Be right back. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating Investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. 
Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve takes your phone calls now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, let's see, out with the uh, earnings. we got a bit of movement here in the markets. Let's start off with Molly Corp. MCP is the uh, ticker symbol. They generated revenues of $136.8 million versus $104.6 from the prior year. Not too shabby there. Their uh, Q2 loss narrowed uh, to $0.44 cents versus $0.71 cents from the year earlier. But Molly Corp. is uh, getting hit this morning. It's down 14%. That's off a of buck. So last trade here. Fired off at uh, looks like a six. Uh, what was it here? Six dollars and thirty-five cents. Closed at seven forty-one last night. The swing point low out here is about five twenty-nine to five oh four. That's the June twenty-fourth area. Six bucks. We had a little bit of a sign of a strength out here on July tenth. That low was six fourteen. It's trading at six thirty-eight. The high of that is seven dollars and ten cents. So that's where it's going to trade into. There's another sign of strength out here inside Molly Corp. We're going to see if this area here holds this morning. See what kind of volume. We have uh, coming into it. I'm going to draw a black line across my uh, screen. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and now I'm going to go ahead and leave the other uh, moving averages on my uh, screen at the moment. So you can see it should have some pretty decent support. This thing broke out wide price spread, accelerated volume on May the 10th out there. Uh, $6.12 is that low. So we'll see during the next uh, hour and a half if, in fact, uh, that holds out here. Or if it comes back into that breakout area, just simply with uh, too much uh, volume out here. Certainly if you're in Molly Corp, you're doing a lot of bottom fishing out here. And I'm not suggesting that's the uh, wrong move out here, but we'll see how we'll see how today uh, trades. Remember, this is a, this is an equity that uh, was brought to our attention by uh, David White in the early stages when this thing was uh, just coming into market back in the 2010 time frame. It ran all the way up to a high of about eighty bucks, seventy nine sixteen on uh, May third, two thousand eleven, and uh, of course today right now it's trading at uh, six bucks and change out there. MCP again was the uh, ticker symbol. Let's take a look here. How about uh, Noodles and Oodles out there? Noodles and Company, NDLS. Let's go see what uh, they had to say for themselves. We'll go ahead and put the uh, stock chart on my screen. The reason being is this is a, a new IPO out here. Uh, it has been off to the races. Right now it's going to be a little bit of a retracement. It's coming back. Uh, it's right now trading down about 7% here in the pre-markets. Last trade firing off at about uh, 4406 is what it uh, looks like to me if my date is being updated. Uh, yeah, it's, it most certainly is. So it closed at 47.27. They generated revenue of 89 uh, million versus 75.4. So, you know, some, uh, some growth there. I don't know how many stores it is that they're opening up. Net income, 68,000 versus 2.1 million. Yikes. 68, uh, so it must just be it's just all about growth for these guys here. Anyways, NDLS is the uh, ticker symbol. Again, the last trade looks like it fired off at about 44 
bucks. This thing on the IPO, this big volume day down here, the top of it is thirty nine seventy. Maybe price comes all the way back down to the uh, top of that candle. If you were looking to get in on this IPO, not enough data inside these charts here to really tell us anything. If I go down to a uh, shorter term time frame, let's see if maybe there's a A to B equals CD down pattern or something like that. Now, not really a whole lot out here in the case of uh, noodles and company, but it is going to pull back uh, today. It's going to be a little bit of a six uh, percent discount. You want to see what kind of volume actually comes out of this thing. I would expect it not to see anything really substantial, and we'll see if thirty nine seventy is a place that would hold as a support level. Rack Space Holding, R A X, uh, that is off to the races this morning. That's up about eleven percent. So let's go check into this. Rack Space had uh, gotten crushed. A while back, so let's see. I haven't looked at this. Uh, yeah, it got crushed, and all that it did was it came back uh, into uh, this and got crushed several times. So let's see. The last time that this broke down was on the trading session of May eighth, and the uh, level was forty nine fifty one. That was the low of that session, up to fifty two forty five as the high. Rack space right now is trading out at forty eight bucks. So it's still just really trading into an area where it broke down. It closed at forty four twenty two last night. Uh, this thing had big volume on the way down. We'll see what it has today but this thing broke down with 16.8 million shares out there so it's got an untested resistance area which is going to be the low of that candle from may 8th 49 dollars and 51 cents so we'll check back in with this stock after it's traded for a while and see what it is doing but it has had some major institutional selling going on that wasn't the first time back on may the 8th the first time was back on february 13th and that had 16 million shares to the downside as well out there so uh, not a very pretty sight here inside a uh, rack space but we'll see what it does today also in the uh, pre-market here let's see we've got uh, uh dendrion dn dn no that's not for dunkin donuts although i'm sure dunkin donuts probably wishes that they could have gotten that ticker symbol here but dendrion down 17 percent right now that last trade fired off at 382 that's going to take it all the way down to the june 24th swing point not a lot of volume down there, only 3 million shares. Looks like this thing is uh, going to try to get to lows out here, major lows. 877-927-6648. Be right back, folks. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. With over three decades of commodity trading experience, Andy Hecht has developed a system that combines both technicals and fundamentals. He calls this approach Technomental, and now you can put it to work for yourself with his brand new service, the Technomental Commodity Report. 
In this weekly newsletter, which comes out each Thursday morning, Andy gives you his analysis of the market price direction bias using fundamentals and then specific trade recommendations, including entry and exit points using technicals. The recommendations in the newsletter are always based on stocks and ETFs, so a futures account is not required, and Andy will often use options in the recommendations as well. Andy will tell you where to get in, where to get out, and he'll outline the risk-reward profile for all recommendations. To get your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht while locking in the low introductory rate, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're off to the races. We got the Dow down 29 points. Train out at 15,468. S&P's off two at 16.95. Composite down one point at 36.67. Russell 2,000 down a dollar 70. Trading out at 10.47. Google off a buck. Apple down 90 cents. Microsoft flat. Intel flat. Cisco up seven pennies to the upside. It is Priceline. You want to talk about taking off to the moon? Nine eighty-six and change is what it's at traveling at right now. Up fifty-two bucks, fifty-four bucks right now after earnings. So it looks like this is going to be our thousand-dollar stock out here. Oh, don't you wish you owned this instead of uh, Apple? No more flying underneath the radar for Priceline out here. Uh, you got uh, Tableau Software, D-A-T-A -A is their ticker symbol. They're up a nice 17% this morning. That's up 10 bucks in change. Ubiquity Networks, U-B-N-T, up 37% this morning. That's up 8 bucks. Rackspace Holding up 11%, up 470. Air Methods Corp, A-I-R-M. Have it a nice morning, up 10%, up 340. Universal Display, O-L-E-D. That is up 11% this morning. I thought Universal Display was panel, P-A-N-L. I, uh, I guess I was just thinking of something else. You've got uh, Amedesis. A-M-E-D. I'm sure I uh, blew, I butchered that, but that's up 20%, up 3 bucks this morning. Baidu up 2%, up 280. NPS Pharmaceuticals up 15%, up $2.78. NOAA Holdings up 16%. Some big percentage uh, uh, increases here this morning. To the downside, Salix Pharmaceuticals off about 6%. That's down 4 bucks and change. Noodles and Oodles. It's actually just Noodles and Company. They're down about three bucks right now. That's off six percent. Right Medical Group down nine or eighty-five percent. But I this is showing up on my. We're gonna skip over Right Medical Group. Forget forget them. Yoku Tudu. That's the name of the company. They're down 10% this morning, off $2.50. Web.com, www, that's off about 8% this morning. That's down $2. Stratasys, the 3D uh, maker out there, Stratasys off uh, 2% this morning. Tesla down a buck twenty-eight. no big deal there. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, that's really all that uh, to the uh, downside that we are seeing in the marketplace. Now, the last five Fridays, folks, have been up trading sessions. And we know that the Bears have control of the market. Certainly they do if we take a look at the uh, New York Stock Exchange. Let's go over, in fact, let's do that here. The uh, oscillator being below zero. You've got the uh, uh, McClellan Summation Index. That has uh, turned down, uh, still traveling uh, downward. And so the uh, Bears have control of the ball. It'll be interesting to see as we come into today's close whether or not really psychologically 
the Bears and the Bulls, how that battle plays out. I can tell you, I believe it's the last five Fridays in a row have been up days out there, so we'll pay attention to uh, today. What would be needed? Because that's a great question I just heard somebody ask. They said, Steve, how? What's what's needed in order for the Bulls to take control of the market place today? That would be net advancing issues of 1,903 or more. Right now we've got net declining issues of 320, but we're just into the day's trading session out here, so We'll have to come back and take a uh, look at uh, that one. But that's what would be needed out here. Now, if we go take a look at the ETFs, we're going to take a look at what was going on inside the ETFs yesterday because I think that was of interest to all of us. Let's start off by taking a look at the uh, Qs here. Yeah, the uh, Qs finished up yesterday, 19 million shares. Moving up, 19 million shares going into the swing point from August 5th that had 15 million shares. That's got to make you say, hmm, Something to think about. The something to think about, $77.08. That is the August 5th swing point high out there. Still unfinished, I guess you could say, is 77.22. That would be your 1 to 1, A to B equals CD. But what clearly took place yesterday was not a push lower with volume, but instead a push higher with volume inside the queues, pushing into that swing point with volume. That says that at least you're going to see a test of 76.78. Well, it's at 76.79, so we just saw that. Most likely the test of the high, 7708, before it releases any kind of information uh, to us, and that is on the uh, Qs. The uh, bearish candle out here, little evening star reversal candle that formed out here, that says a close above 7708. Guess what? That's a close above resistance, and old resistance can become new support. So I believe the Qs are something we want to pay attention to. Let's go take a look at what has been acting week out here, and that was the IWM. If we take a look at the IWM, it actually pushed a bit higher yesterday with 27 million shares. That 27 million shares coming into the downdraft on August 6th with 24 million shares out there. So that says, okay, it wants to actually also push higher. That push higher probably to the low of the August 5th swing point at 104.90 out there. Only 15 million shares. Yesterday it was up with 27 million. That's got to also make us say, hmm, something to think about. How about the spies? Let's go check out the spies, see what they're doing out here. The spies, what did they do yesterday? Well, the spies rejected for the second day in a row the May 22nd swing point high. 169.07 was that number. Well, we know volume, there's not going to be any chance because that was 243 million shares back on that key reversal day on May 22nd out there. Yesterday, though, pushing higher with 102 million shares after the day before, pushing lower with 84 million shares. So up with 20 more million, that's a, a pretty decent percentage-wise push. What are the uh, and, and the spies also really pushing into that swing point from August the uh, 2nd. I think that's the high. Let me see. 170.97, uh, 170. Yeah. So they're pushing into the August 2nd swing point. That had 91 million shares, and yesterday was a push into it with 102 million shares. It says that that's got to be tested again out there, and that's on the uh, spies. Now let's go take a look here at the uh, at the diamonds. Let's go take a look at Lucy in the sky with diamonds. The diamonds here, obviously the weak link in the entire chain. That says that 30 stocks, and it's not all 30 stocks, because not all 30 stocks are weak out there. It's really only about, as I recall, I did the, uh, I mean, I hope I get this right here. I looked at it a couple of days ago, taking a look at how many of the Dow 30 stocks price oscillators were turning down. I believe it was 30%. So only 30% of the Dow 30, that means 9 out of the 30 stocks actually were looking pretty bad out here. And uh, but, they, but still, nonetheless, this is the weak link out here. 155.14 is a, a key number. You get a close above 155.14, guess what? You're back above, you're back into the upper part of the range, and the upper part of the range says what? It says, uh, well, 157.87 is the next pattern out there. That's a 1.272 butterfly. So we'll just have to wait and see. But I can tell you the Qs are saying they don't necessarily want to back off. We want to take a look. We want to watch the Qs, the NDX. We want to see what happens uh, there. Yes, look. No question about it. The bears have control of the market, and uh, maybe this is nothing more than just a bear trap that's being set up out there. But yesterday, the ETFs actually gave us a pretty clear indication that at least they wanted to not just fall apart here, not fall apart on the vine. Last five Fridays, as I say, have been up Friday, so we'll see what today has in store for us. 
Uh, let's go check out. Uh, let's go check out what's going on in the commodities out here. So Goldilocks, we covered that. Uh, that gave a, a nice buy signal uh, yesterday and says prices ought to head up to fourteen eighty six to fifteen forty five because if in fact this is a takeoff point for a uh, gold. Uh, it will do more than the one to one A to B equals C D up. That's what that point three eight two retracement is really telling you. Which version, whether it's one to one point two seven two, one to one point six one eight, a one to two, you know, one to two is probably yet before you would see it start to uh, back off up there. That's at the sixteen oh nine level. Silver also taking off to the moon percentage wise yesterday, outperforming uh, gold. Nice wide ranging bar here. Not that I'm not a believer in silver, but silver really has to clear that uh, candle, that body from July 22nd out there. Uh, only uh, 22,000 contracts, as it was trading up yesterday, was doing it with 41,000 contracts. So it's got me being a believer out here. Silver more likely to head to about 2150, maybe 2213 out there once it clears the uh, takeoff point of $20.57. Light sweet crude, as I mentioned earlier, that was uh, up this morning. It's up a buck 31 right now. Uh, all light sweet crude continues to do. Here's a, you know, that's a scary situation. I guess not scary, uh, but uh, only been able to back off to the point three eight two retracement level. It's done it uh, twice now. Yesterday was the uh, second time. Getting a little bullish and golfing that uh, candle here today. Light sweet crude, for whatever reason still wants to go tag that 114 area wants to complete at least that consolidation that one year consolidation that it uh, broke out of my preference as you know would be for it to come back all the way to the 0.618 retracement and to test that 99 dollar area uh, because that would be the nice potentially either buy to go to the long side or to the short side in my opinion uh, because of uh, because of how to play that consolidation zone bonds we go check a look at take a look at uh, bonds here again not doing a whole lot just another day of sideways trading action with inside the uh, candle from July 5th out there. I don't really see any trade, maybe intraday trades out there on uh, tighter time frames, 10-minute charts, 15-minute charts, something like that. But on the uh, daily charts out here, not in my opinion, not giving us a whole lot of information. I did give you a number on natural gas yesterday and said, if this happened, it would I would become a believer. Well, guess what, folks? It did happen yesterday. And that was a close above three dollars and thirty one cents out there yesterday we got that close we got that bullish engulfing candle and so where i had not been a believer inside natural gas well that's a whole different story now today because what did we really have take place yesterday one i gave you a uh a price point a price point projection that would say hmm Natural gas, this could be a buy. Number one, we took a look at the 1 to 2, A to B equals CD. That finished out at $3.22 out there. And as you know, if you've got the book, The Art of Timing the Trade out there, what you know is when you do or when a market does a 1 to 2, A to B equals CD, usually something else is going to take place. We also saw natural gas moving down into the oversold territory, which meant what? It meant that natural gas now is going to do that something else, whether that is a move sideways or whether that is a buy from here that's the only thing we don't know but what we did get yesterday was we got my confirmed buy signal inside natural gas now that buy signal didn't take into account that we also got as I'm looking at it right now and I'm doing this on the fly here we got a key reversal session inside natural gas now key reversal session that can only happen when three conditions are met one of those conditions being an extended condition. Well, we got that by just taking a look at the 1 to 2 A to B equals CD. We got that by taking a look at the oversold territory inside natural gas. So condition one has absolutely been met. Condition number two is that the close needs to be in the opposite uh, direction out there. So that we most certainly saw with the uh, bullish engulfing uh, candle. In fact, let's take a look at a potential trade. I didn't uh, spot this until... Just as I was actually uh, coming on the air and preparing for a uh, sh the show out here this morning, so that being the uh, case out here, let's actually try to see if I can uh, help you to figure out a, a trade. Because uh, many of you that trade the UNG or you want to trade the UNG, that would be the instrument. But it's got to be traded off of the contract. You got to be paying attention. That says a close below yesterday's low of three twelve, and you would want to bail on any type of uh, long trade out there. But let me see if I could pull something up out here. If not, we'll just do it uh, manually. Give me a moment. See if I can do this here. Uh, search. Let's see here. Okay. 
Uh, let me see if I can blow this up on my screen here. This, folks, is called the position size calculator. It's, in my opinion, is what you want to be doing when it comes to your trading and investing. The whole key, folks, to uh, trading and investing comes down to a couple of elements. Number one is to identify your risk. And your risk is very simple. It should always be a percentage of your working capital. I like to say use 1% of your working capital as your risk. So if you've got $10,000, it means you're going to risk 1% on the trade. So all my newsletter subscribers, they've got access to this. It makes it easy to calculate and it works on everybody's uh, system. So, you know, whether you're trading Tom, whether you're trading uh, uh, Daryl, David, Basil, doesn't matter, Andy, whatever you're trading, you know, you want to use the same principle here for identifying what, how many shares you should buy. First, let's determine the risk. Well, we're going to use $10,000, and that way you can go ahead and use it as all of your increments. Now, what I did was I just simply put in the UNG out here, hit the search button, up comes the UNG. What's nice about this gives you the average true range. says that on a daily basis uh, over the last 10 days, the uh, UNG has been, uh, uh, the average range has been about uh, 43 cents. Now, I like to use an expansion of that 43 cents for your stop, making stops so tight just to get uh, stopped out of a trade because of travel within the average true range, that would mean that I know where the market is going. And, folks, I can't control where the market goes. I can only control what I can control, and that's risk, and that's what my position size is. So now let's come back here. We'll, we'll finish this out here, but let's go back into the UNG and try to uh, figure out where this might head to. So we'll take a look at the uh, UNG, and we'll take a look at possible areas of retracement here uh, just for a target so we can determine whether or not this is going to meet our uh, needs for a possible trade out here. Now, the likely targets that we know of, we know swing points are going to be one of them, so that's going to be $20.29. The most recent swing point is July 18th out there. We also know we want to take a look at retracement levels. That's going from the high. In this case here, we're going to use April 18th at 2409 all the way down to the uh, candle, the bullish engulfing candle, key reversal session from yesterday out here, 1659. Well, the .382 retracement is 1946. The .618 is 2123. I would say our range here for where the UNG would bounce to is going to be between that 2029 level. Well, it's really 1946 to 2123. That's your range. Let's use 2123. I need to mark this. Let me grab a sheet of paper here. So I'm going to put down, we'll put down 2123, because that would be the normal expectation out there. And then you just simply manage the trade along the way. Now let's go put the position size calculator up here. So we're going to do that. Oh, my goodness, we're going to be timed out from a break. When we come back from this break, we'll go ahead and we'll complete this transaction here. This uh, We'll figure out the position size. That means how many shares you would buy for every $10,000, and that's on the UNG. That's because we got a reversal signal yesterday. 877-927-6648. Be right back, folks. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term 
long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position at Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program. The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, sponsored by Nadex, up next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's down uh, three. S and P is uh, flat. Forty cents is what it's up. Composites up uh, six. Russell two thousand up uh, about a buck seventy right now. And talk about a wall of resistance. It is sixteen ninety five inside the E S mini. And we're talking about uh, getting up here three times recently. The first time ten o'clock in the morning on August the eighth. Next time we were up here was at about two thirty in the afternoon yesterday on the ninth, and we just got up there during this uh, during this session here sixteen ninety five. You can see a little declining tops line here, this little red trending line. So we're going to see if the ES mini is going to break that, or if this just simply is uh, truly a big sign of we know where the bears are hanging out, and it's truly in the sixteen ninety five area. The question is, the bulls must know that they're hanging out there, and are they going to try to trample over them? In any event, let's go back here. And uh, take a look at the uh, at the uh, natural gas contract. We're going to take a look at the UNG. So the UNG right now is uh, traveling at 1752. So we'll use the entry point as 1752 as a potential entry point on this uh, trade out there. And and I'm not saying take this trade. I'm showing you how to set up a, a trade out there. And I'm telling you that we did get a reversal signal. Uh, I will tell you I am not long this trade, but I am going to consider it. That's for sure. So we're going to take a look here. At the uh, entry point, 1752, that's towards the bottom. So all you're doing, if you're using this position size calculator, you're putting in the instrument, you're hitting the search button, and then you're indicating whether it's an index, whether it's a stock, or what have you. And that just sets up some parameters so that your total investment in the equity uh, doesn't exceed a certain uh, a certain parameter. I don't like to put more than 10% uh, of my total working capital in any one specific stock. So this will help me just to understand that. It just simply sends out a signal. In any event here, 1752 would be the uh, entry price. We're assuming if we entered right now. And our target on this was uh, 
Twenty-one twenty-three, I believe. Two one point two three. So all we got to do is put that in there, hit the calculate button. Now in this case, it tells us that it would take. Tw- although we're only risking one percent, that means on every ten thousand dollars in capital, our risk is only a hundred dollars. Still, that hundred dollars is going to require twenty-five. Per- or that risk is still that one percent is going to require twenty-five percent of our total working capital that you would allocate to this because it's going to cost you for the number of shares that it's suggesting that you buy. Position size one hundred. 44 shares, and by the way, I suggest you round up or down to some more even number, like in this case here, 150. We're using this as a guideline, like Jack Sparrow does as well. And in this case here, uh, so you do 150 shares times 21 bucks is going to be over $2,500 out there. So it helps you. So when I say 1% risk, the risk is the risk that we're controlling because we're using stops. If you don't use stops, don't use this system. In fact, don't use any systems and don't trade. You need to use stops out there because if you don't use stops, what you're telling the market and you're telling yourself is that you know where it's going. And none of us know that. All that we can do is go ahead and take some educated uh, guesses, use some tools out there, identify spots. It's why you like to go ahead and have your targets on both sides of the trade. You know, if your target gets taken out to the upside and you make money and the stock, the equity, the ETF, the currency, whatever it is, moves beyond that, are you really going to complain about making money? Because if you're going to complain about making money in a money-making business, man, that's a bad, that's a whole bad scene out there. You can always get back into the trade. You can always adjust your trade and adjust your stops. But while you're away from the system, which is really the beauty of trading, it is to find the trades, enter the trade, and then go for a walk on the beach or wherever it is and let the market do its thing while you go do your thing. And I always suggest that your thing is not watching the current trade but looking for the next trade because the real key to making money in a money-making business is to go out and find the next trade because really your capital is never totally allocated for the most part. If you're using this structure here, we're only taking 1% of your not your total working capital, but your available trading cash capital out there. So in this case here, uh, what we can see is this is suggesting a reward to risk of 5.3 to 1 out there, and that's on the UNG. Man, time absolutely flies here. Folks, have a, a fantastic weekend. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, sponsored by Nadex. That's coming up next. Daryl Martin and myself, if you're off to start your day, your weekend, have a great weekend. I look forward to seeing you Monday morning. Take care, folks. What's the one thing that pulls people back from the breakthrough that they're moving towards? What's the only thing that really stops people from taking action? You and I both know the answer, and sure, we can come up with the reasons why we're not where we want to be, but the only reason that we don't do more with our life is fear. Or if you're an overachiever, call it stress. Simply put, there's something that happened to us in our past that's holding us back from the life we deserve, yet you and I are okay, we're here. So why should we let our past control our future? Exactly. We shouldn't. Hi. I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com, and when it comes to your trading and investing, I can help you overcome your fear of loss. Together, we'll turn weakness into strength with a system I've developed called Mastering Probability. I'll teach you how to make your money work harder for you than you do for it. I'll teach you the tools that provide financial freedom. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com, click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and begin your journey of mastering probability risk-free. It's time to become a pioneer of your future versus a prisoner of your past.